Goroutines are useless for backend development. Thank you very much. I see you in the next video. Basically, what happened is I never go to Reddit to read stuff, um, but people on my community, on my Discord community, on my Discord server. So if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. Leave some questions in the comments. Give me a thumbs up and jump into my Discord community. Somebody of the Discord community basically reached out. Hey, Anthony, is this true? So um, I clicked on the link came here and um, somebody asked, uh, asked a question on Reddit. Today I was listening to the podcast and one of the hosts said basically that go routines are useless for backend development because we don't run multi-core systems when we deploy. We run multiple single core instances. So I was wondering if it's in your experience true that nowadays we usually deploy only to single core instances. Disclaimer, I'm not a Golang developer. I am a junior Java developer, but I'm interested in learning Golang. And then we have this link to that podcast. Um, click it. I'm not going to click it. I already listened to it. The guy basically said that, uh, actually, to be honest, let's click it anyway, right? But the thing is that um, my desktop audio is pretty much bored. So let me play gonna, this I'm going to add to this. Go was invented to solve a problem that we immediately stopped having in some regard. Not, not all of Go, but specifically its go routine model which is by the time they actually got go routines stable and landed working the way they were described in the original conference talk five years prior they were useless because we don't run multi-core systems anymore you you deploy and it runs on multiple instances multiple single core instances where they're actually not even single core instances they are one half of a hyper thread yeah I one half of a hyperthread. So basically, this guy has a point, right? Um, he has a point, but so first of all, go routines. Each go so what a lot of people mistake, and a lot of um, newcomers in the Golang industry uh, get mistaken, is that they think that each go routine is going to run on a different thread, which is not always the case, right? Even if you run on a single thread, even if you have one single CPU, you can use a shit ton of Go routines because what the Go internal scheduler is going to do, and correct me if I'm wrong, like I said, I'm not the smartest kid on the block, right? But what the Go scheduler is going to do is going to see if there is some kind of a blocking operation, if it needs to wait, because in, especially in the web, you have this input output um, spectrum where sometimes we need to block for some operation and then it Golang will schedule your Go routine first or will schedule a Go routine because it's waiting anyway, even though you have one single CPU, right? Does that mean that we are utilizing Go routines at a maximum if we deploy? Well, no, the guy just said uh, most of the time, indeed, you're going to be in a virtual, uh, it's just basically a, a big machine is going to be split up and you're just going to utilize uh, just a fraction of it, right? Most of the time, unless you do it yourself and you go bare metal or something uh, or on your, local, on your local machine, it's completely different than when you deploy, right? That's completely true. Um, but... The beginner mistake of a lot of Golang engineers is to, because they come into Golang and they see this concept of go routines, which is a concept is so easy to spin up async work, to spin up workers, eh, what they call that, right? Um, and they just overuse it, right? Everything they see, okay, I'm, I need to do some operation, I'm going to spin up a go routine. And that's actually wrong. Right? Because especially in web development or in backend development, if you're making servers, right, um, backend infrastructure, I rarely, I barely use go routines. We use them all the time because we we, we run on these on on, uh, on on servers and all that stuff, right? And even if you have, have a blockchain or something, you have this peer to peer communication. It's all go routine uh, space. But if we run our business logic, a request comes in, are we going to handle that request? Most of the time, we are never ever going to use a go routine because most of the time, it's going to actually be slower than just calling an, a normal function, right? And wait until it's processed. When is it a good time to use go routines? And I can basically come up with uh, a very common practice is when you need to aggregate data. And I have this uh, already, I think, a video about that on my channel. I also cover this in the full-time GoDev, which is uh, my Golang course. Check that out, 50% off right now. It's basically when we are aggregating uh, data for a user, for example, right? So you have your, your, um, 
your application, your backend application, and a user is requesting its user profile, for example. And then uh, what you need to do is you're gonna fetch the user profile, you're gonna fetch the user likes, you're gonna fetch some third party API, for example, you're gonna fetch his Tinder likes, which is completely nothing. You're gonna fetch, uh, I don't know, maybe his GitHub profile, his commits. So you're going to have one single request coming in, and you're basically going to fan out and aggregate a bunch of user data, right? And uh, each time you do a request, there's something that is called the HTTP round trip, right? And the round trip is basically how long it takes before your request hits the other side and comes back, which is a round trip. And most of the time, these round trips, the, 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 um, it could be 100 milliseconds, could be 200 milliseconds. Some will be maybe 80 milliseconds, right? And uh, if you have like five or six of these calls, you're going to stack up all these latency, right? You know what I mean? And then you're going to have uh, the user needs to wait until everything is aggregated. Um, maybe the user needs to wait two seconds or something, which is uh, bad news. You know what I mean? Then you better have a spinner um, so you can notify it's going to take a long time. So then is it very, very convenient to use a GoRoutine because you can actually um, fire up all these requests in different GoRoutines and then basically synchronize the results. And what's going to happen is that um, you're going to wait for the weakest link, right? So you're going to wait for the longest HTTP round trip. So instead of having two seconds, you're basically maybe going to have... Um, 100 or 150 or 200 milliseconds which is a big win i that's in my opinion one of the most used uh use cases uh, for using go routines in backend development and if you run that on on, on a multi-thread system or you run that on a single thread system uh, i don't think it really matters in that case but correct me if i'm wrong uh, but i think I, it doesn't matter because i do this all the time if i need to use go routines in that case to aggregate that data right because using go routines it's it's very easy to spin up like i said in golang it's very easy to spin up a go routine the only thing you need to do is just go prefix go for your function and 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 that's it but the problem is if your go routine is returning data you need to synchronize that right you need to synchronize that data and that comes up it's not that convenient you know what i mean it's a little bit tedious sometimes especially if it's just a simple function and you're gonna you're not going to benefit any speed uh, from that most of the time. And then you need to synchronize that stuff. That's just nasty, right? That's just a waste of time, right? Uh, that's that's my, my take on it. I'm going to keep this video very, very short. Uh, it's basically true and it's all, it's true, right? What, what, what the guy is saying on the video. But like I said, it's, it's not optimized, right? It could be much, much more optimized. Uh, the systems could be much more optimized for using Go routines. But that doesn't mean that go routines are useless. Not at all. Right? You're always gonna have benefits by using go routines if it makes sense to use that go routines uh, in backend development, especially in, um, like I said, the example I just mentioned, the data aggregation, which uh, is a video. I will link the video in the description, uh, which shows you how how you can do that. Right. Um, so, yeah, good question. By the way, it's a good question. Nobody is right and nobody is wrong. Uh, that's sometimes what it is. Uh, like if I make a mistake or something, if somebody has much more, uh, can uh, like I said, I don't want to go into details all the time because most of the time it doesn't really matter. Uh, but if there is a specialist here uh, that wants to amend some stuff to the shenanigans I am spitting here on the screen, go ahead, do it in the comments so we can all learn from each other. So never overuse go routines, and most of the time it doesn't make sense. And if they make sense, make sure you need to synchronize that stuff and all that things. And hopefully it benefits you. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Consider subscribing to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave some questions in the comments. Jump into the Discord community so we can shit talk a little bit more. And have a good day, night, or morning.